Chapter 6 They walked hand in hand back toward the train station. Bernard nodded at the first hotel he saw, eager to get the wedding night started. That one all right? Elizabeth shrugged. Was one hotel any different from another? She'd never stayed in a hotel, so she had no way of knowing if this one was better or worse than any other. She followed him into the hotel lobby and to the front desk. I'd like your nicest room, please, he said to the desk clerk. It's our wedding night. Elizabeth blushed at his words. Now everyone would know what they were doing that night. Why that mattered to her, she didn't know, but it felt strange. It was as if he was announcing to the world that they'd soon be making love for the first time. A few minutes later, armed with the room key, they started up the stairs. The hotel was a four-story. You don't want to take the elevator? she asked. She didn't mind the stairs, but the clerk had said they were on the fourth floor. He shook his head. I don't trust them. Once you're inside you're trapped. Elizabeth wasn't sure what that meant, so she just nodded and climbed the stairs, beside him. She was in good shape and regularly climbed the stairs in her home, sometimes going up and down them just for the exercise, which she'd read recently was a healthful practice for women. Since the problems with the deacons had arisen, and she'd become a target, Bernard hadn't wanted her leaving the house at all without him at her side. Before the problems they'd encountered, she'd gone for a brisk walk every morning. When they reached the fourth floor, she was barely winded. She waited as he unlocked the door to their room and stepped in, putting her package on the small dresser. When he went to kiss her, she asked for the one thing she felt like she needed from him that day. May I have thirty minutes to get ready? She knew she was asking for a lot, but she wanted to be clean and wearing her new nightgown. Surely he'd understand that she wanted to look and feel her best for their first time together. Bernard eyed her, not wanting to wait even that long, but realizing she probably wanted to bathe and change into her nightgown. I'll go for a quick walk. Be ready. He left the room, closing the door with a snap. As soon as he was gone, Elizabeth hurried into action. She got the nightgown out of the brown paper wrapping and ran a tub full of water. She was thrilled to see the hotel had hot and cold running water, making it easier for her to ready herself. She bathed quickly, wanting to wash her waist-length hair, but knowing it wouldn't have time to dry if she did. Instead she hurriedly bathed and dried off, pulling the nightgown over her head. She pulled the pins out of her hair and brushed it until it shone. By the clock on the dresser, she had three minutes remaining of her time alone when she climbed between the sheets. She only pulled them up to her waist, even though everything inside her was screaming to cover herself up to her neck. Bernard had a right to see her, though. She was his wife. It was exactly thirty minutes from when he left when she heard the key in the door. She lay on her side facing the entry, her breasts mostly visible through the thin linen of her nightgown. Bernard dropped the key onto the dresser, his eyes never leaving her. He seemed almost predatory to her as he undressed, dropping his clothes in a path from the door to the bed. When he was down to just his pants, he stopped and walked to the bed, but instead of walking to the far side of the bed, as she'd expected, he walked to the side she was lying on. He sat beside her, his hand going to her new nightgown, running up and down her side. Is this the gift you purchased for me? he asked. She nodded. I thought I needed something special for our wedding night. She blushed, feeling silly now for bothering. I have something special for our wedding night, you. But this is beautiful on you. He put a hand on either side of her head on the pillow and leaned down, brushing his lips against hers. You're on my side of the bed. She blinked up at him a couple of times. You have a side of the bed? Didn't we just get married a couple of hours ago? What did it matter? He grinned at her words, leaning down to kiss her again. We did. But I will always sleep on the side closest to the door, where I can protect you better. So you need to scoot over. She pouted. I wasn't aware we were going to sleep so soon.
Truly she was stalling, because she didn't want to move out from under the sheet. It made her feel like she was a little bit covered with her legs under it. He laughed at that. You know we're not going straight to sleep, but you need to get used to sleeping away from the door. No matter where we are, that's your place. He stroked her hair away from her face. I've never seen your hair down before. It's a mess when it's down. I keep it pinned up even at home. Of course, you know as well as I do that we never know who will be coming in the front door of my house. He nodded. Will you do something for me? She bit her lip nervously. This was all so new, and she had no idea what he wanted of her. Within reason. He laughed. Skeptical little thing, aren't you? I like that. He sat at the edge of the bed and tugged on her hand. Will you kneel on the bed? I want to see you in your pretty nightgown, with your hair spilling all around you. He'd rather see her without her pretty nightgown of course, but all in due time. She blushed, but nodded. It was a simple enough request. She got to her knees on the bed, letting her hair fall all around her. She watched his face as she did so, wanting to gauge his reaction. Bernard let his eyes travel from her blonde hair down to her knees and back up again. He wondered if she realized the gown she'd chosen was sheer enough that he could see her nipples right through it. Her hair spilled over her shoulders, and he lifted a hand to smooth it behind her back. Do you have any idea how beautiful you are to me? Elizabeth sighed, relieved. She was so worried he'd be disappointed in her. She reached out and touched the side of his face, stroking her fingers over the stubble she found there. He'd shaven early that morning, but his face was already a bit prickly. I'm glad you're not disappointed in me. Bernard blinked a couple of times, feeling that he must have misunderstood her. Disappointed? You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Your body is perfect. How could I ever be disappointed in you? Elizabeth felt the tears sting her eyes at his words. I just always worried I was too, scrawny, to be desirable. He reached out and cupped her breast in his hand through the fabric of her nightgown, his thumb finding her nipple and flicking it softly. This does not feel scrawny to me. It feels perfect. He knelt in front of her on the bed, his hands going to her waist to pull her toward him. I plan to worship your body with mine, Elizabeth. You are everything I've ever dreamed of in a woman. He lowered his head to kiss her, his tongue tracing her lips as his hands roamed over her back. She wrapped her arms around his neck, clinging to him. His shoulders were bare, and she rubbed her hands over them, kneading the muscles there. I want this to happen, she whispered against his lips, but I'm scared. He pulled back and looked deeply into her eyes, his thumb stroking the corner of her mouth. There's no reason to be scared. If I do something you don't like, tell me. I might stop. She giggled at his words. Might? Well, you do want me to be honest with you, right? His fingers went to the bow at the front of her gown, untying it slowly. She looked down at his fingers, watching as he undid the ribbons, thinking how strange it was to see his big hands handling the fine ribbons. He unbuttoned the six large buttons going down to her waist, and then carefully spread the gown open, his eyes locked onto what he'd uncovered. She'd always thought her breasts were too small, but he didn't seem to mind at all. He rolled one nipple, between his thumb and forefinger, as he leaned down to kiss the other. Seeing his head against her breasts, feeling him suckle her nipple, she let out a moan. She wasn't certain what was more arousing to her, his touch or the sight of him there. She ran her fingers through his blonde hair, encouraging him to continue. He kissed a trail up her chest to her neck, biting it gently, before taking her lips again, this time in a passionate kiss, his tongue moving into her open mouth to tangle with hers. While he kissed her, he pushed her nightgown off her shoulders and down around her waist, leaving it bunched there. He pulled her closer to him, so they were in direct contact from shoulder to stomach, and she let out a gasp. The hair on his chest caused a strange friction against her breasts, and she moaned softly.
That feels nice, she whispered against his lips. To me too, he responded, his hand stroking her cheek. She let out a sigh. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. She knew she was probably being too blunt, but she was good at blunt, and she didn't feel very good at this. He grinned. Do you know what one of my favorite things about you is? She shook her head. I don't think it's that I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. No, it's that you're not afraid to say what you think. You're not afraid to ask questions. What do you want to do right now? Elizabeth thought about that for a moment, her cheeks turning pink immediately. I'm not that blunt. He raised an eyebrow at her reaction to his question. That blush is intriguing. He took her hand and put it on his chest, letting her know it was all right to touch him. What do you want to do? She shook her head, the blush deepening, but she didn't remove her hand from his chest. I'd rather not answer that question. I don't think I can move on without an answer, he said, humor filling his eyes. Whatever she was thinking, it couldn't be as naughty as she was making it out to be. She didn't know enough about what they were doing to have naughty thoughts. She bit her lip, wondering how she could answer him without seeming more wanton than she really was. I want to touch you, she whispered, her voice, barely audible. Everywhere. He grinned, liking the idea. He caught her hands and put them on the waist of his pants. Do you want these off? he asked. Her face grew redder, but she nodded. She averted her gaze as he moved to the side of the bed and removed his slacks, climbing back into bed and lying on his back with his hands behind his head. Have at it. She started at his feet, running her hands over them, feeling the coarse hair on his legs. Slowly she moved her hand over his knees and up to his thighs. There was a scar on his thigh, just below his hip. She touched it with her hand. What happened here? He sighed, wishing she hadn't noticed. I was shot during the robbery that killed my partner. She leaned down and pressed her lips to the scar, still avoiding looking at his member. She kissed up his hip to his chest, her hands touching him everywhere, but the place he needed to be touched the most. She leaned over and kissed him, only then realizing her nightgown was still bunched up over her hips, so she kicked it off, pressing her naked body to his. Bernard kissed her back, his mouth opening as she kissed him, more aggressively than she ever had. He brought his hands out from behind his head, and caught her closer to him, roaming his hands up and down her back and over her bottom. I like how you feel, she whispered against his lips. He smiled, looking deep into her eyes. Aren't you going to feel all of me? he asked. Elizabeth blushed, shaking her head. I thought I could, but... She peeked down toward it, seeing it for the first time. I... He could see the sight of him made her nervous, so he quickly caught her hand and brought it to his erection, pressing her hand against it. Elizabeth jerked her hand away in surprise. No, it's not right for me to touch it. We're married, he said simply. It's not wrong for you to touch me. Anywhere. Maybe when we've been married for five or ten years, I'll have the courage, she said, leaning on her elbow, her hand skimming over the muscles of his abdomen. I promise, if I haven't touched it voluntarily by then, I'll do it on our fiftieth wedding anniversary. He laughed at that. I have a feeling you'll be touching it much sooner than that. He abruptly rolled over, reversing their positions so that he was poised above her. No more playing around, Mrs. Tandy. It's time to get serious. She looked up at him with wide eyes. He had one leg between both of hers, and he was stroking her insistently. I still don't know what I'm supposed to do, she protested. Just touch me. Or lay back and enjoy me touching you. Either way, enjoy yourself. His hand stroked over her insistently, cupping her breasts. One hand roamed down between her thighs, testing her readiness. As soon as his hand landed at her core, she gasped, a feeling of warmth flooding through her body. Is it okay for you to touch me there? she asked. 
Stop worrying about what's okay and what's not. How does this feel? She pulled his head down for a kiss instead of answering him. How could she tell him she'd never felt anything so wonderful in her life? Before she knew what was happening, he'd rolled atop her and was inside her. She gasped at the feel of him moving inside her, not quite certain if what she felt was pleasure or pain or some combination thereof. Chapter 7 Afterward, Elizabeth snuggled up against Bernard's side, her head on his shoulder. It was just starting to get dark outside. She kissed his shoulder. I'm hungry. He laughed. That's all you can say after our first time together? You're hungry? In his fantasies, she'd thanked him for making love to her. Reality never did match his fantasies. She nodded emphatically. I am. I was too nervous to eat much earlier, and now my stomach is growling. He sighed. All right. Get up, and we'll go get something to eat. He cupped her face in his hands, kissing her. Are you always going to be difficult, wife? She giggled. Most likely. You wouldn't want me any other way, though. She was glad he knew her so well already. She didn't feel like she had to try and hide her impatient nature from him. Once they were dressed, they went down the stairs of the hotel, to the dining room there. It was late, just before they were about to close. Once they were seated, she took his hand and wove her fingers through it. I think I feel married now. And how does it feel to be married, he asked, one eyebrow raised. She tilted her head to one side, studying him with a grin. I think I like it. I hope so. There was this little thing about not parting till death in our vows. That might be important. You know, if there's one thing Harriet taught me before she left Beckham, it was to never stay in an unhappy marriage, even though you'd taken vows. She's a brilliant woman. She took a sip of her water. What time do we need to catch the train in the morning? She hated that they already needed to move on. She'd seen very little of St. Louis, but it was now her favorite place in the world. Not until noon. And how far to Fort Worth? We're about halfway. Is Susan expecting us? Elizabeth grinned. She's expecting us, but she only expects me to stay with them, of course. We may want to get a hotel anyway. Bernard smiled. I like the way you think. Her face grew serious as she thought of something. Why didn't you tell me about getting shot when Michael died? He shrugged, his face shutting down. Is there more to the story? Bernard frowned. I was shot first, and when I fell, Michael ran between me and the bank robber. He died saving my life. I've felt responsible ever since. Would you have done the same for him? Well, of course, I would, but he had a wife and four children. I should have saved him. He should have let me die. Bernard shook his head as he thought out that day for the thousandth time since the incident. His wife was devastated, but I have no one. Maybe it's selfish of me, but I'm glad you didn't die. I'm glad you're here and married to me. He shrugged. The idea of her being alone with four children because something could happen to him frightened him to no end. There was nothing to be done for it though. He'd taken the selfish road and married her, and it wasn't like he could keep his hands off her to prevent children. No, he had made his bed and it was time to lie in it. He only hoped he could do it in a way that would make her happy. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. By the time they got to Fort Worth three days later, Elizabeth felt like she was living a charmed life. Bernard made his love for her obvious in everything he said and did. He hadn't said the actual words to her yet, but she knew it was just a matter of time. Susan and David were waiting at the train station in Fort Worth, and Elizabeth launched herself at her sister. Susan had the presence of mind to pass off the baby in her arms as her sister came barreling at her. They hugged for a full minute, both of them laughing and crying at the same time. When Elizabeth pulled back, she wiped her eyes with the handkerchief Bernard held up in front of her.
Susan smiled at Bernard through her tears. You must be Elizabeth's butler, Bernard, she said brightly. Elizabeth blew her nose loudly. You're only half right, sister dear. This is Bernard, my husband. We got married in St. Louis. Susan gaped at Bernard for a moment, but then she opened her arms wide, hugging the big man. Welcome to the family. She put her hand on David's arm. This is my husband, David, and our little one, Gustav. Mrs. Hackenschleimer insisted it was her turn to name one of the children. Elizabeth remembered immediately that Mrs. Hackenschleimer was Susan and David's housekeeper. He's beautiful, Elizabeth whispered looking at the baby in her brother-in-law's arms. May I hold him? David immediately gave her the baby, before turning to shake hands with Bernard. Elizabeth stared down at him in wonder. Where are all the others? At home with their nurse, Georgia, Susan answered quickly. Well, Albert and Louis are probably helping to break some horses, and the twins are probably watching. The younger ones stayed with the nurse. It's hard to picture you as the mother of seven, Elizabeth said with a laugh, remembering how much her sister hadn't wanted children. Susan shrugged. I find myself a natural mother. I love them all. She took Elizabeth by the arm and led her back to the wagon. In a whisper she asked, How did it come about that you married your butler, of all people? And why didn't you at least wait to get to Fort Worth to do it? I could have been there for the wedding. Maybe I was thinking about your letters about your wedding with your boys rolling in the mud, fighting immediately after. Were you? Susan asked with a raised eyebrow. Well, no, but I could have been. And the real reason? Elizabeth blushed and whispered. We couldn't keep our hands off each other for another minute. Susan let out a loud laugh. You're awful, Elizabeth. Really? Elizabeth nodded. I'm not ashamed of it either. I married him instead of having relations outside marriage. I did the right thing. She didn't add that she'd practically begged Bernard to do the wrong thing, but that was only because she didn't think it was any of her sister's business. I know you don't have room for a married couple to stay with you, Susan. We'll just stay at one of the hotels here in town. Susan frowned. I won't get to spend as much time with you that way, though. We'll still have plenty of time. Bernard has to investigate a potential groom while we're here. A matchmaker's work is never done. I still can't believe you're doing Harriet's job and living in that huge house of hers. It must seem strange after the farm. Elizabeth nodded. You'd be surprised at how quickly I got used to being waited on, she said with a laugh. And how quickly I fell in love with my butler. Why, I've been in love with him for almost ten years, and he's just now noticing me. Are you sure he hasn't been in love with you for just as long? He was giving you some pretty longing glances over there, lizard breath. Elizabeth laughed at the childhood nickname the demon horde had given her. Do you have any idea how long it's been since someone called me Lizard Breath? I can't say I missed it. Susan smiled. Well, how about you two plan to have lunch and supper with us every day? You can come out after breakfast and spend the day, and he can do whatever he needs to do. Will that work? She frowned. I thought I'd have a full two weeks of sister time, and that time seems to be disappearing from before my eyes. Elizabeth hugged Susan with one arm, still clutching the baby in the other. We're still going to have lots of sister time. Her eyes traveled to where Bernard and David were talking easily as they picked their way through the crowd toward the wagon. And I'm going to have a lot of honeymoon time, too. Susan sighed. I guess I can't stand in the way of newlywed sex. Elizabeth burst out laughing. Is newlywed sex different than non-newlywed sex? Susan shrugged. It becomes less frequent, but it's better, because you know each other so well. It becomes more intuitive, I guess. She smiled over Elizabeth's shoulder. David, they're going to stay in town, but come out for lunch and supper every day. Does that work? <laughs>
David nodded. Why don't you two use the courting buggy while you're here? It's certainly not big enough for our whole family, and Albert and Sarah aren't speaking again. Again? Susan said, sighing. What happened this time? She caught him making eyes at Ruby. Susan smiled. I always liked Ruby better than Sarah anyway. Maybe they'll get married and make me a happy woman. Let the boy marry whomever he wants to marry. David sounded almost angry. I will. He's too young to marry right now anyway. He's only 18. No one needs to be married at 18. David glared at Susan. I was married at 18. And look how that turned out. You were a widower with four boys who acted as bad as the demon horde. Elizabeth looked at Susan in shock. Didn't his wife die in childbirth? Well, yes, but, I'm sorry, David. I got carried away. I just don't think that Sarah would make our Albert a good wife. Susan looked miserable as she apologized. David nodded. I understand. He looked at Bernard. Why don't I drive you two to the hotel to check in, and then we'll go out to the ranch. You can drive yourselves back into town with the courting buggy. Bernard nodded, looking back and forth, between Susan and her husband. What had he gotten himself into? Asterisk asterisk asterisk. They spent the day at the ranch, enjoying the family. Elizabeth loved having her nephews and nieces around. Albert didn't seem terribly interested in an aunt that he'd never met before, and Louis followed his lead. The twins were sweet, though, thrilled with the gifts she brought them. Through it all, Bernard leaned against the wall watching Elizabeth. Whenever she caught his eye, it felt like he was ready to protect her from any danger right there in the ranch house. Why would there be danger in her sister's home? As they drove back to the hotel that night, she asked him just that. Why are you so nervous in my sister's house? You act like you're ready for someone to jump out and try to kill me at any moment. Bernard sighed. I just have a funny feeling is all. It hasn't been long since Deacons Jackson and Belafonte were killed, and we still don't know where Deacon Smith is. I worry that the organization they worked for may have some surprises stuck up their sleeves. Do you really think they're after me? Elizabeth had a hard time believing her place in the thwarting of the deacons was big enough for her to still be a target. I honestly don't know, but if they are, I'm going to be ready for them. You're the most important thing in my life, and I'm not letting you go. Bernard kept his eyes firmly on the road and his hands on the reins. Without Elizabeth, he wasn't sure he'd have anything left to live for. That's the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me, she told him, scooting closer to him and gripping his arm. She turned and kissed his shoulder. Why, that's so sweet, I may just let you make love to me when we get back to the hotel. He laughed. Because you hid under the bed when I wanted to make love to you last night and the night before that. It hadn't taken him long to discover that his sweet innocent-looking wife was as lusty as he was, and he liked her that way. Well, I just thought you'd be pleased to know that I didn't plan to hide from you tonight. Well, I'm relieved, because all I've thought about all day was what I was going to do to you once we closed that hotel room door. He stopped the buggy in front of the hotel. Lowering his voice he whispered, you should wear that special nightgown for me again. I like that, I can see your nipples through it. Elizabeth gasped as if she was offended. Well, I never. He laughed softly. Oh, yes you did. And I enjoyed it. Chapter 8 Elizabeth greatly enjoyed her time getting to know Susan's family better. It was strange to see her sister as a mother, but she realized Susan had taken to the role like a duck to water. I never quite understood how you ended up married to David instead of Jesse to start with, Elizabeth told her one quiet afternoon while she was sitting with her sister while she nursed baby Gustav. Susan shook her head. Jesse was killed while I was en route. David was his older brother and only surviving family other than the children. He was the only one Jesse had discussed the fact I was coming with, 
so he met me at the train station. She chuckled softly. At first, he only told me about the twins who were two at the time. When I came out here to meet them, he bribed the two older boys to be good. They were Hellions when I first got here. So were they good when you met them the first time? Susan nodded emphatically. Good enough, I agreed to marry David. When I realized he'd bribed them I was so angry. We hadn't been married twenty minutes, and the boys were rolling in the street covered in mud fighting. I think it was about a cat, or something equally silly. What did you do? I told David he wasn't getting a wedding night, and then I punished the boys. David doesn't believe in corporal punishment, so the punishments had to get pretty creative. Susan sighed. Within a few months I had them whipped into shape, though. And David eventually got a wedding night? Susan laughed. He apologized profusely and got one on our wedding night. I probably should have held out longer, but he's a good kisser. Elizabeth laughed. So is Bernard. Not that I have anyone to compare him to, of course. Bernard stepped into the room then. Elizabeth's eyes widened, wondering if he'd heard her talking to her sister. Where'd you come from, she asked, blushing a bit. He raised an eyebrow at the look on her face. I was in the stable, helping David with a sick foal. Were you doing something you shouldn't have been? You know I wouldn't. Elizabeth smiled sweetly. What brings you inside? Bernard shook his head, knowing she was up to something, but not sure what it was. David wants me to ride out onto the range with him for a bit. We're going to leave the older boys to watch out for you ladies, but I wanted you to know where I was going. Susan raised an eyebrow. Exactly why do you think we need to be watched over? She looked back and forth, between Elizabeth and Bernard. What are you keeping from me? If Elizabeth wants to talk about it, that's up to her. He nodded to Susan and bent over to kiss Elizabeth lightly. He had been brought up that kissing in front of others shouldn't be done, but Elizabeth had ensured him her family wouldn't mind. I think you should tell her. She needs to know her family may be in danger. The words were whispered in her ear, before he turned and left the house. Susan glared at Elizabeth. Exactly what are you not telling me? Elizabeth sighed. I didn't want you to worry. She shrugged. For at least the past five years, there has been some unusual activity in Beckham. I was contacted by some other matchmakers from around the country, and I got involved trying to help. What kind of unusual activity? Is the family in danger? No, the family is fine, and we think everything is safe now that the deacons are dead. Elizabeth sighed. But we're not sure if others in the organization they worked for are after me. I helped a lot of girls get away from the deacons. Deacons? There were deacons involved in a slavery ring? In Beckham? I know it's hard to believe, and not everyone knows about it, but it happened. Bernard is convinced that they're going to come after me. He hasn't let me leave my house alone in years. He goes with me everywhere I go. Susan smiled. He really cares about you. It's fun to watch him watching you. It's as if he's afraid if he takes his eyes off you, you'll disappear. Elizabeth blushed. I think he's worried that I'll realize I've married my butler and wish it wasn't so. That's not happening, though. He's an amazing man. I just wish I'd had the courage to grab him and kiss him ten years ago instead of waiting until we were on the train. You've had feelings for him for that long? Really? Susan was a sucker for a good love story and always had been. Why didn't you act sooner then? I would have. Elizabeth laughed. Well, he was my butler, and he tended to be so serious about everything. I had no idea he had feelings for me as well until he kissed my hand on the train. She realized how silly that sounded. It wasn't just that he kissed my hand, but how he did it. I know that sounds strange. Well, I'm glad you two finally figured it out. You really do seem to be right for each other.
Susan shifted the baby sleeping in her lap. I keep watching Albert play his little games with Ruby and hope the two of them will realize what they mean to each other before it's too late. Albert has been courting one of the neighbor's girls, Sarah, and she's a sweet girl, but she's just not right for him. I mean, they usually get along great, and she practically worships him, but she lets him run all over her. She sighed. Albert needs a woman who will stand up to him and give him a good fight. Ruby will do that. Maybe he doesn't want to fight with his future wife. Bernard and I have never fought. Elizabeth thought Susan was insane. Why would anyone be looking for someone to fight with as a spouse? Didn't you want someone you could get along well with? You will. Susan replied, a little too happily for Elizabeth's tastes. There are too many sparks between you not two. I guess that's my problem with Sarah and Albert. You look at them, and they're comfortable together, but there are no real sparks. I don't think we'll fight. We've worked together for ten years and never fought. We've disagreed a few times, but we always ended up seeing eye to eye. Susan laughed. If you were to go for a walk right now, with no men watching over you, what do you think he'd do? Elizabeth contemplated that for a moment. I don't think he'd be happy about it but I don't think we'd fight. She shrugged. We never fight. Oh, you probably wouldn't. He'd just lock you up so you couldn't endanger yourself again and let you out when you're a very old woman. Of course, he'd be the only one who could get in for visits because he wouldn't be able to stay away from you. Susan. Elizabeth did her best to sound scandalized before dissolving into giggles. You're right about one thing. He wouldn't be able to stay away. That man is too interested in, she clamped her lips shut, refusing to finish what she was about to say. It wasn't something people talked about, and she'd already shared more than she should with Susan. Her sister would think her a loose woman. I can tell from the way he looks at you. Susan said with a grin. I'm glad you found love, lizard. So glad. Well, we haven't exactly talked about love yet. I'm afraid to frighten him by saying it. Susan shrugged. It took us a while too, but I was a mail-order bride. It's hard to picture you marrying someone who you weren't sure of. We were both too interested in being together to worry about anything but tying the knot and having our wedding night. Sometimes that's the only thing that matters, Susan responded with a grin. How long did you two have to wait to marry once you decided to? A little over 24 hours, Elizabeth said with a grin. We just didn't see a need to wait. I thought about waiting to get to Fort Worth so you could stand up with me, but it just didn't seem like it would be prudent. Maybe not. I wish you would have found a way to wait, though. I would have liked to be there for at least one of my siblings' weddings. The demon horde is growing up and marrying so fast. Elizabeth shook her head. I know. Three of them got married last year. And Mary has a baby. That's the hard thing. It was so strange for me to watch my younger sister go through pregnancy before me. Do you wish things were different? That you hadn't accepted Harriet's offer of the business, and you'd married instead? Not at all. I mean, sometimes, when it seemed like Bernard would never realize I was a woman, I wondered if it would have been better if I'd never met Harriet. But now? I can't imagine my life without him. He's my everything. Susan nodded to the children's nurse, Maria. Will you watch the children while we walk for a while? she asked. Of course. Maria walked into the room and sat down as the other two women left. Elizabeth happily wandered outside with Susan. Where are Albert and Louis? Aren't they supposed to be our bodyguards today? Susan shrugged. Do you honestly think we're in danger? If we go out without the boys, do you think someone is going to come along and shoot us? Or is Bernard just being overprotective? Oh, I'm quite certain he's just being overprotective. The man takes worrying about me to a whole new level. Elizabeth shrugged. 
I think at home in Beckham it makes sense for me to be extra cautious, but here in Texas, I'm just not worried about it. We'll be back before he realizes that we even left. Then let's walk. If you can bear your husband's wrath, I can bear mine. Susan threaded her arm through her sister's. Besides, do you know what the best part of fighting with your husband is? Elizabeth looked at Susan with a grin. No, what? Making up. Elizabeth laughed softly as they started out toward the back pasture. She had always loved being outdoors, and she knew Susan did too. There was just something about being a farm girl and loving nature. As they walked, they talked. They'd only had letters for ten years, so it was nice to just be sisters again. So tell me about the ranch. David trains horses? Susan nodded. He inherited the ranch, but his love has always been training horses, so he has a foreman he trusts to oversee the daily operation of the ranch, and David does the training. The older boys seem to be following in his footsteps, but the twins want to run the ranch. I'm not sure how that's going to work out for any of them, but I'm glad they're all interested in their heritage. Do you realize every one of our younger siblings has either become a farmer or married a farmer? I don't think they realize there are any other jobs. Elizabeth shook her head. You'd think at least one of them would want to head out west, but so far, you're the only one who's moved further from home than five miles. As they rounded the stable, Elizabeth caught sight of two men she didn't know. She assumed they were cowboys working for David and just kept walking. They were no further than 100 yards from the stable when she realized the men were following them. Don't look now, but there are two men following us. Did you see them? Are they ranch hands? Susan shook her head. I saw them as we rounded the corner, but didn't recognize them. They could work for David, and me not know about it, because he's always hiring someone new, but I just don't know. Are you worried? Elizabeth bit her lip. I don't know. Let's switch directions, and see if we can head back to where the men will be. Where did Bernard say he was going? She knew her husband would have a gun, and she'd feel safer once she could spot him. Her heartbeat accelerated as they took a slight turn to the right trying not to make it known they realized someone was following them. He said he and David were going for a ride on the range. I'm nervous now. We shouldn't have done this. Susan threaded her arm through Elizabeth's trying to look nonchalant, but her hand was shaking. We're going to be fine, Elizabeth said softly. We're going to walk in a big circle back toward the house. If they get close to us, we're going to start screaming as loudly as we can. This is a working ranch. There are people within earshot. Through everything with the deacons, she'd never been in danger herself. Bernard had kept her away from it all. Susan took a deep steadying breath. That's a good plan. All right. I'm not going to panic. She squeezed Elizabeth's arm. Maybe David asked them to watch out for us. Maybe. Elizabeth wasn't convinced, but she didn't say anything else about it. Tell me what it was like to be pregnant. Did you feel an instant connection with the babies once they were born? She didn't want to talk about pregnancy or babies, but she needed to get her sister's mind off their worries. She kept guiding her off to the right trying to make a big circle to get them back to the stable where they'd be within eyesight of the men working with the horses. As she turned, she realized the men had picked up the pace and were gaining on them. Susan was still answering her question about how she'd felt when the babies were born, so she interrupted her. I'm going to count to three, and we're going to scream in unison, the very loudest we can scream. All right? And then we're going to run just as fast as we can toward the pasture where they keep the horses. Susan nodded, her face white with fear. I can do that. Elizabeth made another turn to the right. One, two, three. On three both sisters screamed and broke into a run. She could hear the footsteps of the men behind them, getting closer and closer. Susan fell and Elizabeth grabbed her under the shoulder, 
helping her to her feet. As she did, she saw a gun in the hand of one of the men. They were definitely not there to protect them. Chapter 9 Bernard heard the scream and stopped his horse, looking over his shoulder to where the sound was coming from. Was that Elizabeth? He spurred his horse toward the sound of the scream, seeing his brother-in-law do the same out of the corner of his eye. Do you have a gun? he called. Yes. I've carried one since you told me your worries. David was racing toward the sound, too. They stopped when they were close enough to see the situation. Elizabeth and Susan were on the ground, and two men stood over them, pistols trained on them. Are you a good shot? Bernard asked quietly. He knew he could shoot one of the guns out of the men's hands, but he needed someone to take out the other. He could possibly get both of them, most assuredly before they shot him, but not before they shot one of the sisters. He couldn't risk Elizabeth or Susan. Good enough. Which one do you want me to take? You get the big one, Bernard said without thinking. He knew his aim, and he knew it would be no trouble for him to get the smaller man. No problem. Both men took careful aim, and Bernard said, No. They shot, and it sounded as if it was a single shot ringing across the Texas prairie. The big man dropped, having been hit in the gut. The smaller man let out a yell of pain, dropping his gun. Elizabeth rolled to her side, snatching the gun he had dropped and training it on him. The man stood cradling his hand to his chest, his eyes glazed with pain. Susan, are you all right? she asked, not taking her eyes off the outlaw who had dropped to his knees, clutching his hand. I'm fine. Just scared. Elizabeth heard the sound of horses coming toward them, but she didn't worry. She knew it was Bernard and David. Who else would have shot the men so cleanly? She heard the horses stop, and Bernard's voice. I've got it, Elizabeth. You can put the gun down. Elizabeth hadn't realized how badly her hand was shaking until she slowly lowered the gun to the grass. She sat back in the grass and buried her face in her hands. What had she been thinking to walk off without waiting to see if there was someone guarding them? She'd put her sister in danger. She was still nursing her youngest baby. What would have happened to him? Bernard didn't look at Elizabeth, keeping his eyes trained on the outlaw still standing. Who sent you? The man looked at him with wide frightened eyes, shaking his head. I asked who sent you. No answer. I have no problem shooting your other hand. Or your knees. Tell me who sent you. Was it Slade? The man's eyes grew wider, and he gave a single nod. Kill me. Anything you do will be kinder than what he'll do if he finds out I told you he sent me. Bernard grinned, looking over his shoulder at David. Go ahead and tie him up. Make sure the rope is tied over that gunshot wound. He kept the gun trained on the man while David tied him. You follow us from Beckham? he asked, almost as an afterthought. The man nodded. We got on the train you was on. As soon as the man was secured, Bernard turned to Elizabeth. He dropped to his knees, before her, and pulled her to him, his arms going about her soothingly. As soon as he touched her, Elizabeth started weeping, feeling like a child. She'd been afraid he would be too angry to even speak to her after what she'd done. She wrapped her arms around him and buried her face in the crook of his neck. After a moment, he got to his feet, holding his hand down to help her up. We need to get the sheriff. He looked at David, who was holding Susan. Do you want to go, or do you want me to? My good-for-nothing boys need to go get the sheriff. Where are they anyway? David looked around, a look of pure fury on his face. Elizabeth shook her head. We never saw them. We had Maria stay with the babies while we went for a walk. They weren't out here. Bernard's eyes met hers, the anger in them almost palpable. When you didn't see the boys, why didn't you turn around and go back inside? You knew I didn't want you wandering around by yourself. Tears poured down Elizabeth's cheeks, 
I just wanted to walk with my sister. I didn't think there could really be any danger here. We're so far from home. So because you decided to ignore all my warnings for your safety, you put yourself and your sister in danger? How would you have felt if she'd been shot? Would you have stayed here to raise her children? David doesn't need to be left with young children again. It's already happened to him once. Elizabeth recognized the truth in his words. She'd already thought all of it herself. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to put anyone in danger. But you did. I know the rules I make you live with seem to be overly strict, but I won't lose you. Bernard caught her by the shoulders and gave her a little shake. Do you understand? I can't lose you. Elizabeth nodded, her eyes wide. Never before had she seen him so angry. He'd continually done what he needed to do to keep the girls in Beckham safe, but never had he let her see him angry. Over his shoulder, she saw Albert and Louis coming toward them. They were both moving slowly. She nodded toward them and pointed, trying to distract Bernard. She'd rather discuss this when they were alone than in front of her sister and David. As they arrived, she could see lumps on the heads of both boys. What happened, she asked, hurrying toward her nephews, not surprised that Bernard was right behind her. We heard you come outside, and were about to follow you, when two men came at us with guns and hit us in the head. When we woke up, you were gone. Albert glared at Susan. You were supposed to stay put. Susan sniffled again. We didn't know what happened. Why would you leave without us? It makes no sense. He glared at Susan, his arms folded across his chest. We've already lost one ma. What are you trying to do? Make us lose another? Susan hurried to Albert and pulled him into her arms. He was a good head taller than her, but he folded her against him, holding her tight. Don't do that again. His voice was choked up as he gave the command, ruining the effect. I won't. I promise. David walked to Lewis, examining the knot on his son's head. You up for riding into town for the sheriff? he asked. His face was concerned, but his voice was steady. Lewis nodded. If Ma will ever let Albert go, we'll head out. Susan released Albert, but immediately turned on Lewis, hugging him just as tightly. He made a face, but it was obviously just for show, because he held the tiny woman against him. I'm glad you're safe, he said gruffly. As Susan watched the boys go, she walked to the outlaw, who was tied up in front of them. The other one dead, she asked, wiping the tears from her eyes, and looking at the men angrily. Yeah, David answered. Good. Before anyone could stop her, Susan drew back her foot and kicked the one still alive as hard as she could in the knee. I hope you bleed to death. She grabbed Elizabeth by the hand and dragged her back toward the house. We're going to go recover from our ordeal. You men make sure there are no outlaws in my pasture when I come outside again. She didn't wait for an answer. Elizabeth waited until they were out of earshot of their husbands before asking, Have you lost your mind? Susan shrugged. Years ago. You can't just stand there and let Bernard yell at you. I know he has a right to be angry, but you have to get your courage up to fight back. No point in just letting him yell. It's not fun. You have to be ready to yell back. We'll practice. Susan? I love you, but you really are crazy. You try being married with seven kids. You'd be crazy too. Elizabeth laughed softly. Yes, I probably would. It was hours later, before the men finished dealing with the sheriff and had the outlaws off their land. When Bernard walked into the house, he didn't look at Elizabeth. He faced Susan instead. I want to apologize for my wife's behavior. She had no right to drag you into danger the way she did. We won't be staying for supper. Susan blinked a couple of times, as if she were trying to understand him. You're going to let her come back tomorrow, though, aren't you? 
Bernard inclined his head. I suppose that depends on her reaction to our discussion tonight. We can send supper back to the hotel with you, Susan suggested. I don't want you to go hungry. He shook his head. No, we'll get room service after we've talked. Elizabeth stood up, feeling like a small child who was being chastised. The worst part of it was, she knew she deserved anything he said to her. She had put herself and her sister in danger, and she'd been warned. Whether she had believed the danger was real or not, she'd acted inexcusably. Susan rushed to Elizabeth, hugging her tightly. Remember what we talked about. Elizabeth shook her head. I made a mistake. I need to live with the consequences of my actions. She looked at Bernard. Let's go. Bernard didn't take her hand or offer his arm as he usually did, instead he simply let her precede him out to the front of the house where the courting buggy was waiting for them. He took her hand to help her into the buggy, but immediately dropped it after she was seated. The thirty-minute drive into Fort Worth passed in silence. Elizabeth thought about trying to start the inevitable discussion as they drove, but she knew it wasn't what he wanted. As soon as the door closed behind them in the hotel room, she walked to the sitting area, taking one of the chairs. She waited for him to take the other. Once he was seated, Bernard looked at her, his face cold and angry. For a man who had never shown her anger, she was amazed at just how long he could maintain the emotion. It took a great deal of energy to stay seething mad for as long as he had, and for some reason, she couldn't help but admire him even more for being angry for so long. Why? It was only one word, but Elizabeth could see by the look on Bernard's face that her answer to that question was of utmost importance to him. Elizabeth took a deep breath, surprised by the harshness of her husband's voice. To be honest, I just didn't think I was in danger. I, I know it's no excuse, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but I just, I misjudged the situation, and I underestimated you. I thought you were worrying for no reason. She looked down at her hands, the tears forming in her eyes again. I'm so sorry, and I won't ever be so stupid again. Bernard watched her, feeling some of the anger leaving him. I expected you to make excuses, to tell me all the reasons that what you did was all right. She looked back up at him, tears streaming down her cheeks. She hated that she was crying, because she didn't want him to think she was trying to manipulate his emotions. What I did wasn't right. It was stupid, and I almost got my sister killed. She has young children who would have been without a mother. I should have made sure the boys were there before I left the house at all. He sighed. Yes, you should have. He shook his head. I wasn't ready for you to admit you'd done anything wrong. Everything I'd planned to say is just gone. He reached out and took her hand. I want your word that you'll never do anything like that again. You'll be more careful. When we get home, there will still be dangers. She nodded. I know there will. I'll listen to what you say. She'd always listen to him as she would an employee who had her best interests in mind, but then she'd make her own decisions. She didn't have the right to do that any longer. Will you forgive me? He used the hand he was holding to pull her toward him and onto his lap, holding her close. I don't know what I would have done if you'd been hurt, Elizabeth. I've loved you for so long that it would have destroyed me to lose you. Please don't ever scare me like that again. His face was buried in her neck, and he drank in her scent. Elizabeth pulled back, looking at him with surprise. You love me? Really? He gave a half laugh, looking up at her. How have you not seen it on my face every day for the past eight years? Elizabeth pouted. Only eight years? I've loved you since the moment I set eyes on you. He pulled her down for a quick kiss. I was so broken when we first met, it was all I could do to put one foot in front of the other. I blamed myself for Michael's death. If the situation had been reversed, what would you have done, she asked logically. I'd have gotten between him and the bullets, of course. But he had a family, 
She nodded. He did. But he knew that when he made his choice. I'm sorry for his wife that he's gone, but happy for me that he made the sacrifice. Who's to say one life is more valuable than another? Bernard looked at her for a moment, before folding his arms around her and holding her close. I can't argue with that. Why don't we make a deal? I won't argue with you about whether or not I need to be protected, and you don't argue with me about whether or not you were worth saving. You are a wise woman, Elizabeth Tandy. She leaned down and pressed her lips to his. I do love the sound of my new name on your lips. Epilogue Elizabeth stood up slowly from behind her desk, a hand to her back. The baby had been weighing heavy on her for weeks. The midwife had said she would deliver any day, but she was starting to think that she'd be pregnant forever. Bernard walked in then, coming over to wrap his arms around her. I'm sorry you're so uncomfortable, my love. I always thought each child was supposed to come sooner than the others. With Benjamin, they said, the first child is always late. Then the same with little Katie. And then with Anna. Now, with this one, I'm already two weeks late. I'm ready to not be pregnant anymore. I know you are. He looked down at the letters scattered over her desk. Looks like it's time for another edition of the Groom's Gazette. It is. I've been working on getting everything ready. Who would have thought we'd still be doing this paper twelve years later when we started it? She was happy to take the change of subject and let herself be distracted from her discomfort. Once you're done compiling everything, I'll take it over to the printer. There had been no more attempts on her life since they'd returned home from Fort Worth seven years before, but he still guarded her as if she were a bank vault filled with precious gems. Because she was to him. He treasured each laugh from her and the children. His life was very different than he'd imagined it would be seventeen years ago when he'd come to work for her after the death of his partner. He had healed with her at his side. Never again would he worry that Michael had made the wrong decision by giving up his life for him. He knew he was doing what he was meant to do. Living a life full of love and acceptance. What more could a man ask for? Did you enjoy this audiobook? If so, please like, subscribe and ring the bell for notification of future videos.